Let me know what you eat. Slightly warmer than temperature room. That's crazy. Guinness is too. No, but Guinness when you put like cider. All right, guys, we're starting soon. So. Welcome back to the Johnny Rossi Experience. Today, with the 500th episode, we have a couple guests from McGill University who uh, designed a propeller. So who do we have here to my left? Hi, I'm Dimitri. Hi, uh, I'm Austin. And I'm Martin. Cool, cool. So, uh, Austin, what did you guys do? Yeah, so uh, we were tasked with uh, designing propeller. Um, we wanted it to achieve a static thrust of, five, of uh, 0.2 newtons while spinning at 5,000 RPM. Um, and then when uh, we had an oncoming flow of 5 meters per second, we wanted to achieve uh, maximum efficiency at uh, 9,000 RPM and uh, while keeping the propeller below 13 centimeters and keeping it light as possible. So if you, uh, if you bring up the, uh, the slide there. Sure, sure, sure. Ah. So yeah, so here's a, uh, a curve showing uh, efficiency versus the inverse of RPM, basically. Um, we want that a uh, peak basically occur at 9,000 RPM. Okay, okay, cool. So, uh, but what's a propeller? How does it, uh, how does it work? Oh, it's quite simple, Johnny. Uh, a propeller is basically a wing. Uh, the only difference is it's, it's turned in 90 degrees. So uh, when the propeller is spinning, uh, it actually, uh, when you analyze it, you actually account for the flow that it is uh, impinging on the, on, on, on the, the air around it. So um, the rotational velocity along the blade in, induces a, a different tangential velocity and then uh, this means that uh, you actually quite have quite a few operating regimes along the blade. Uh, on top of that you add the oncoming velocity which is uh, tangential to the pro propeller and that with the momentum created by the blades uh, actually introduces a few other factors uh, that make the analysis quite complicated. But, uh, but like wings have lift, right? Like oh, well, right, right. So uh, the, the propeller actually also uh, creates lift uh, somewhere not exactly in front of it. And then when you translate through geometry that force uh, right ahead, then that, that is a thrust. Oh. And that is what we're, we're trying to uh, optimize. Cool. So you guys actually brought the propeller. I'll show the guests if they, uh, they're not sure what a propeller looks like. I'll just put it on the big screen. So it's, it's like this here. It's yeah. a bit jaggedy. I don't know. We'll get to that later probably. <laughs> So, uh, how'd you guys go about designing this? You have the theory, you have the, what you're supposed to do. What, what right. do you do next? <clears throat> so, Johnny, uh, basically what from Martin said, we kind of took that and made a numerical model, okay, to, yeah. to estimate uh, the values of uh, the, the thrust and the efficiency. So, uh, pull up that overlay. Yeah, okay, I'm glad it's on there. That's great. So, um, this is the algorithm that we basically used to calculate the efficiency. We had to kind of converge to an A and B value because we couldn't ca calculate them analytically. So we used something called the blade element momentum theory. I won't bore you with the details. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you can basically see the crux of it in those equations in the top right, where we pulled some data from X-foil for the aerodynamic parameters of the airfoil and um, chucked that in and basically used those equations along with impulse theory to converge to an A, a and B. Uh, so those new A and B values you can see on the lower right equations. And then taking the average and making a tolerance check, we calculated A and B, which allowed us to get the efficiency <clears throat> of the airfoil for a given, you know, pitch and whatnot. Um, but to really optimize it, we threw that, embedded, it, embedded that into a numerical algorithm, like a, like a bunch of for loops that just uh, swept through all of the different tuning parameters, such as the diameter and the cord, and we even had a really big array of airfoils so we can see which airfoil would be, would be best. Oh, it's quite big. Yeah. And uh, that kind of like um, led to an optimal solution, which um, we'll, we'll demonstrate shortly. Yeah, so what was that, uh, was that optimal solution? Well, you um, talking through your design. So, uh, I mean, it would be easier. Can you just switch to the next slide? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah thanks. Um, so, uh, as you can see, like, this is, the, this is a 3D drawing of the propeller. Uh, it, took, it took quite a few weeks to actually you know, get to the, to the, to the detail because it's, it's, quite, it's quite an intricate design. So the, 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 the big thing in the middle is the hub. This is, you know, the, the, what keeps everything together. So you attach this to the motor shaft with a, with a screw, and then uh, the motor is rotating the hub, and the hub has the, the, the blades attached to it, which rotate and then create the lift and then whatnot. And uh, if you switch to the next slide, I will show you what it looks uh, 
when we slice it up, so at 25, 50, 75, and 99% span, as you can see, the, the airflow is, uh, is there at, uh, all along the blade. However, we change the cord, which in turn changes the thickness of the, of the, of the, of the, of the blade. And uh, right at the end, we actually tapered the, the blade quite a lot to uh, reduce, the, reduce the wingtip effects. Neat. So uh, what did that big old model before tell you? What did it tell you it was going to do? All right, Donnie, we're getting to it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're getting there. Uh, why don't you switch a slide now? Yeah. So as you can see, this is the, the output of the simulation. So um, all the different curves correspond to a different pitch for a given airfoil. This is just an example, right? We did many airfoils. Yeah. This is for the optimal airfoil, the 0010. Um, and we got for a mean pitch of 15 degrees, efficiency of 55%, which is aligns there with that arrow <clears throat> at the at 9,000 RPM. We actually had an offset of zero, so we were right on target, um, well, <clears throat> theoretically speaking, and a thrust of 0.23. Um, so we, we over-designed the, the thrust because, you know, with experiments and stuff, you're going to have some some error, and there was some model uncertainty as well. So we definitely over-designed the thrust. We gave it a little 10% boost, you know. Yeah, you know, a little, 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 boost, more, yeah. little boost. Um, and that's what this theoretical curve is showing us here. So um, I guess we'll explain yeah, what, did, we, what we actually got. Did you, so, did you guys get that? So we uh, actually had to test the, uh, the propeller. So if you go to the next slide, yeah, sure. um, okay. that actually shows our test setup. So this is the wind tunnel. Um, you can see the engine mounted to a, a force plate, basically. Um, and we threw the propeller in there and tested it for all the uh, different parameters. Uh, so if you go to the, to the next slide. Yeah. Did you guys get that 10%? Uh, uh, well, oh. Oh, 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 we'll get there, don't worry. Oh, sorry, guys. I know you're excited, sorry. but uh, so, uh, I don't know what happened. You're so right? we performed two tests. Um, for the first test, the max efficiency that we got was 73%. And for the, uh, the second test, the max efficiency that we got was 53%. So uh, the reason why we did two tests was because the, the first set of test results were a little bit unreasonable. Um, and then the second set of test results seemed to be a bit more in line. Uh, we got similar thrusts. In the first test, we got 0.11 newtons. And then in the uh, second test, we got 0.13 newtons. So, you know, not, uh, not too bad, but still below what we were, what we were looking for. Hmm. You guys have any idea why that... Static thrust was different. Yeah, so like I explained oh, earlier, this is this is based on a model, Johnny. Okay, and all models are wrong. Okay, yeah, I've, some I've, I've, I've heard. I've heard. You know, ours is no <laughs> exception. <now>. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what happened was our model was limited to the mean uh, element, and then we kind of just extrapolated that across the blade. And because our our propeller actually had pitch and and uh, variable pitch, sorry, and and taper, you know that that's not going to be consistent. So there there were some limitations along with some experimental errors, which led to a bit of a difference. It's not such a large difference, um, but that's probably the crux of one of the biggest reasons why there was such a such a difference. Yeah, and then rough. in terms of the uh, the max efficiency, it occurred uh, to uh, 2,000 RPM away from where we expected. It happened too early. So what we would have liked to do with these curves is shift them a little bit to the left, and the way that you do that is re you reduce pitch. You yeah, but, but don't forget that when you reduce the pitch, you're going to reduce the the thrust. So I think overall we would, we would have to right. like it's all literally it's all it's a circular design. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's quite um, complicated, Johnny. Yeah. And and with with manufacturing, as, as you can yeah, see, I can with see, this, yeah. I mean, here you go. Yeah, show, show that to the audience. Uh, so guys, why was it? Why was it like <laughs> so this? <jaggedy>. Bro? <laughs> so there, there's manufacturing errors as well, right? So mm -hmm. uh, even one degree being being off the pitch with one degree is, is enough to really... Yeah, and I mean, the, the test bed wasn't perfect either. I mean, the, those guys didn't even uh, record the velocity of the propeller, you know? Like, uh, we, have to, we have to verify that it's actually spinning at 9,000 RPM, you know? So, uh, I mean, it's quite a few minutes. All right, all right. Well, uh, I think that's, uh, that's our time. Well, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah. Hope, you guys, uh, hope you guys you get know, a better uh, design next time. We, <laughs> we don't know where this propeller is going to lift us up to. Uh. Yeah, maybe you guys could use it on uh, the OAP uh, drone. I hear there's a new like, OAP beer delivery drone. Yeah, 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 I hear yeah, there is. Wow, that'd be, so. uh, that's yeah. a hot take. Well, join yeah, us next I week. I love your show, man. Uh, yeah, thanks, so for, thanks for coming. It's great to be on. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Join us next week when the creator of LaTeX comes to talk about how great it is. <laughs>